Notify Now is a good program, but it isn't going to save people's lives if they're not prepared. All it's going to do is notify them that they're not prepared for an imminent threat to their life. Let's put that to the test. The Notify Now system, my understanding is, gets a message from the chemical plants. Then they decide at DMO the if it releases it to the general public. So if we assume that that could take 30 to, say, even 60 seconds at the least before they start issuing out an alert. Um, while I've been talking, it's like 25 seconds right now. Let's see how far that chemical spread has already taken place. On the 5th of September 2017, I presented to the Planning and Development Committee specifically about zoning issues and safety issues. Nothing about my client, my client's tenant, or the address proposed. You have an item before the uh, development board, correct? This presentation is not related to that? Oh, I don't have an application before the development board. The person who I consult with uh, happens to have one, but uh, if you notice in the letter I wrote to you, there is no mention of the developer or the client who which they work for. This is I'm here specifically about dealing with the way the zoning is written. Okay, good. As long as we're not talking about the issue before the developer, that's right. Because we, we can't do that. Anymore. No, for sure. Thank you. All right, then you can start. In the fall of 2017, my client had a development appeals board hearing regarding a decision by the city of Saskatoon over a property in the chemical buffer. This was a private development. However, the, during this process, the city of Saskatoon circumvented safety issues in this hearing, and they also gave knowingly false information and presented it as fact, which made it into the record as being fact with the city solicitor in attendance. This is significant because when they give knowingly false information and they sway a board because their decisions were heavily biased at the end by this information. It's not going to help the safety of the area when the city isn't being truthful about what's going on. And that's the problem that I have with them. I personally put in a request for the Saskatchewan Municipal Board to have a hearing on the chemical buffer and this thing that took place with the Development Appeals Board. I'm obligated as a professional planner to bring certain things to the government's attention, regardless of a project or not. Uh, being aware of the safety concerns and the things being avoided by the city were enough to trigger me to have to do this ethically. During the Saskatchewan Municipal Board hearing, the City of Saskatoon, with their solicitor in attendance, gave information which was knowingly false again and reiterated and reaffirmed information from the Development Appeals Board that was false. And this affects the overall safety attitude in the chemical buffer, as you will see. Move on, Mr. Chair. Absolutely. I think, again, we're really focused on okay. the yeah, I, I want to uh, focus though, a little bit on the uh, building background side because there was uh, information and, and questions raised, uh, 102 Gladstone being one of the buildings. Uh, there were several buildings in the area that the uh, uh, proponent, Mr. Tarasoff, has brought forward. Uh, the square footage and the amount of office space in those buildings is in the record, so I won't go into those details. Uh, we do issue 15, over 1,500 development permits to commercial industrial buildings. Uh, 102 Gladstone does have some nuances and may have been an issue illegally. I've been advised by Mr. Ken Ox not to consider pursuing any enforcement action on the building because of this appeal. So I have to take that cautiously and how I approach that with my bylaw enforcement section. Uh, that will be up for us to decide. I'm not going to sit here and debate 102 is an office in office. We may have issued a permit. That's not relevant to yeah. the, the other The other permits, uh, the other square footages of offices are in the record. The real motivation for the appeal lies in the more general concerns Mr. Tarasov has about the bylaw and the public safety issues related to the chemical buffer. While we commend Mr. Tarasov's concerns for the public interest, these more general issues are outside of our jurisdiction and should be raised elsewhere. 
even after all the information that I presented to Planning and Development Committee, to the Development Appeals Board, to Saskatchewan Municipal Board, the City of Saskatoon and Mayor Charlie Clark held a large public assembly event on the Chief Mistawasis Bridge for the grand opening. While the chemical plants were operational at, and without any safety provisions, no shelters provided, temporary shelters, and no notification to the people in that assembly that they're, they were at risk. Whatever the risk is, the city knew there was one and they did not notify those people in a public assembly event. Those are facts. That is not just a guess. And it's definitely within the chemical buffer. So why did this take place? And is that not a blatant disregard for their own rules, which isn't supposed to happen legally? I was given notice by the city that my topic about the chemical buffer was coming up again and that the city was giving a response. So I went to this meeting. I couldn't see the attachments online ahead of time because they weren't uh, attached online and I couldn't see them. So I went in blind. I presented all my five minutes about safety and the chemical buffer, which you can watch online if you wish. But then the city went ahead and issued all these reports, and these reports were based on my client, they were based on my client's tenant, and they were based on that one location that the original development was talking about. All three things that were completely had to be excluded from my original submission. Development in limited intensity light industrial zoning district. And we do have a speaker for that item. So would the administration like to move the report or open the report? Thank you. Um, this report is a follow-up to a communication to committee in September of 2017 that identified concerns with the regulations in the IL2 zoning district, in particular with regulations affecting office space uses. The zoning district balances the need to provide economic development opportunities while also limiting the public assembly uses in the area due to the safety impacts related to the nearby chemical plants. For this reason, offices are only permitted as an accessory uses or of a size less than 325 square meters. This matter was considered by the Development Appeal Board on, in October in 2017, and this report provides further information on some of the nuances and also outlines communications that are undertaken with property owners in the surrounding areas with regards to chemical plants. This aspect is also included in Attachment 3. Thank you. Are there any questions of the administration before we hear from the speaker? Seeing none, is Mr. K uh, Tarasov here? So, thank you, Mr. Tarasov. Um, so, I'm looking at the letter that was sent to uh, the government of Saskatchewan indicating that in July <clears throat> of 2018, um, the city uh, hired folks to go door to door uh, with information about um, the brochure that you're talking about, uh, information about sheltering in place, flyers about all of the information, information uh, contact information for um, where to reach out for more, more stuff, links to videos, all of that sort of thing. So uh, I am happy to you know, forward your comments along to the fire chief and for to the emergency measures um, office. Um, but with respect to, you know, the city having done nothing, I need to challenge that. Um, and uh, I'm sorry that you weren't able to access the documents before the meeting, but we have a fairly thorough um, indication of how the city has addressed the, the measures. If you're telling me there need to be formal requirements in buildings for um, for that. That's something I'm happy to look more into. Um, but uh, in terms of communicating the risk and communicating what needs to be done in case of emergency, um, I think it's fairly well laid out here what has been uh, done. So thank you for your presentation today and for um, continuing to bring this to our attention. Do that. Um, so just in terms of the letter, we had uh, we had communication with Mr. Tarasov uh, prior to this letter and he had spoken with other uh, civic groups and we, we had and provincially as well. And so we uh, were asked by the province to prepare a letter of of how the Sastoon Fire Department and Sastoon EMO um, has uh, in terms of how we work within the community and and anything around that area where Urco and Axo Noble operate. And so um, in terms of the letter, you know, Axo and Urco, no uh, Urco and Axo Noble do operate under uh, certain Canadian guidelines and they're all laid out within the letter. And then also another piece to that is that um, we, we have a group set up in that area called the CAP. 
Community Advisory Panel that is uh, chaired uh, by uh, someone that does has worked in our EMO division, but currently is not in that division. So he is looked upon as uh, someone who has knowledge, but is an external that just chairs this committee. And and with this committee, uh, they meet quarterly, as it says in the in the letter, and um, and they communicate with the community. Uh, within a radius of those businesses and and so we send out information through flyers as Mr. Tarasov states but also um, what we did do in July of 2018 uh, two summer students were hired to go door to door to, for a two kilometer radius we communicated with um, 199 businesses that received these information packages and um, this same type of communication occurs every two to three years where we go out and actually do a face-to-face -face visit in those businesses. Does that summarize well enough, yeah. Councillor yeah. Davies? Okay, for me anyways. Thank you. 7.1.3, uh, Mr. Kerry Tarasov. And we have got the uh, Development in Limited Intensity Light Industrial Zoning District. Do you have an intro to this? If you just wait, sorry, Ms. LaCroix is going to give an introduction to it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this report is in follow-up to an earlier report to committee regarding development in the IL2 Zoning District in and around the, the chemical plant. At the meeting when the committee reviewed the initial report, uh, administration was asked to report back regarding review of the emergency response and preparedness planning for properties that are located within the IL2 zoning district. So this report provides a full overview of the current practices in place with Saskatoon Emergency Measures Operations, a community advisory panel that is established within the IL2 zoning district, and also outlines the chemical plant's role. They are the ones who are required to provide community education and notification in and around the IL2 zone every two to three years. The report also outlines the review steps that are undertaken during the building permitting process uh, and in accordance with the building code, the HVAC systems are indeed designed to limit the movement of, of smoke and or other toxins in the emergency. And so in the event of an emergency, the intake of air contaminants can be limited through the uh, shutdown of the uh, HVAC system and the shelter in place plans that are required at all facilities within this particular zoning district. So upon review, uh, there it was found that increased regulations around controls on the HVAC system are still would require the manual intervention or shutdown by the personnel as directed within their emergency plan or shelter in place plan and with that Pamela Golden McLeod director of emergency management and Kara Fanyu director of building standards are here if there are any questions about the details in the report thank you uh, Mr. Yeah. I just have a, a question for the administration regarding the um, communication materials that are circulated by the cap um, I will admit to maybe not having read every word on these, but I, I don't see much on these materials that indicates that this is a locally specific communication, and I'm wondering if somebody can clarify to me whether these materials are circulated with something that specifically identifies this is an issue in your area. Um, my concern is that materials can blend in with other mail, and uh, and I think the Notify Now um, branding helps, um, and certainly some of the color helps, uh, but I'm curious to know whether any of this is circulated with um, specific indication of an area-specific um, need to know. Uh, good morning, Pamela Golden McLeod, Director of Emergency Planning for the City of Saskatoon. Um, through you, Chair, to Councillor Go, I would have to um, check on that. I'm not sure, and I can check on that and get back to you. Okay. Well, I guess I would just leave it as comment that um, anytime we're circulating uh, physical materials, um, especially if they aren't uh, addressed to the receiver, um, that if there is. Uh, is a particular, if it's being circulated in a particular area for a specific reason, that something in those materials uh, front and center that indicates that, I would suggest would be, um, would be uh, prudent. So I'll leave that as comment. Thanks. Thank you. 
Ms. Golden, will that come back uh, to the report that's coming to council then? Will you have that ready for that time? And I did take your picture. I'm going to tweet it out to your mom. She'll be so proud of you. <laughs> thank you. Um, yes, we can get that information back. Great, thank you. <laughs> Seeing no other questions there. So with that, Mr. Tarasov, whenever you're ready, you can begin your five minutes. Thank you, Worship. Um, happy St. John Baptiste Day for any of those yeah. that uh, partake it today. I also appreciate the repeated comments uh, in the past while by uh, Councillor Jeffries and Councillor Gao, and also the support from Councillor Donauer over the last couple of years, especially on this. So I just want to make that clear. Uh, I spoke here, this is now the fourth time. Two weeks ago I was here, and actually I was away until last Friday, so I did the best I could. I was requested of to find information concerning, excuse me, shelter in place, specifically about how to protect people within different threats or hazards. Um, I chose to not take any that were mining related, chose to not look at any that were military related, just to be clear. And I took the nearest neighbor approach. So I presented a document now to the clerk that has this included with it. The City of Edmonton detailed shelter in place procedures for both the workplace and a separate document for home, not specific to any chemical zone or hazard. That's a good starting document for you. Manitoba health guidelines for protecting health and well-being in smoke environments, because it has a lot to do with air shut off and protecting air quality. Yukon guidelines for protecting public health specific around smoke environments. Again, how to protect people from environments, from hazards. Um, I couldn't find anything proper for um, uh, Northwest Territories, but for FEMA, for the United States, design guidance for shelters and safe rooms, including all accidental hazard, chemical hazards. So further to that, I generically mapped out where the, the limit to public assembly and retail activities would exist based on your latest publicly released drawing in January of this year. And by the way, that drawing is false. It is not properly drawn. Your drawing on this date was false and did not accurately represent the risk zone nor the actual restrictions of the zoning within that realm. So now I have further indicated sketches that show you that. So the zoning for three of those zoning, IH2, IL2, or, and IL3, all stop at no um, retail operations and no public assembly. So that's the bulk of the chemical zone. And what's interesting is that the new bridge is in that, and you guys held a very large public event there last year, and I'm not quite clear if you had protections in place for that, because that was hundreds of people assembling on the bridge right in the, about, what, 500 meters from the chemical plant, which is within the one kilometer zone. So anyway, you have that again. But honestly, shouldn't someone from the city be actually properly doing this? You have engaged in actively developing land in these chemical operations, so perhaps someone should actually be doing some sort of diligence on that safety aspect from the start. And now that you're 20 years into it, at least some sort of a cleanup and then going forward would be appreciated. Nothing new has occurred here for the most part over the last 20 years. The risk may have gone down even a little bit, but now you're going out to a two kilometer buffer to try to aware people. Um, two weeks ago at City, I presented, uh, stated that the residents, the city stated, pardon me, that the residents of a two kilometer buffer are required to have a shelter in place plan. Uh, who requires it? You're not requiring it. You're selling land to people, not informing them that they're even in the hazard. There's many people up there that don't even know they've built a building inside of a hazard zone. So who's requiring it? If you don't do it, as the developer and the approver, I don't know who is. So that needs to be addressed. Um, I would take a one kilometer buffer, which you originally started with, and start going backwards from that. Take the one kilometer and start informing people on an address by address basis directly to say, here's a shelter in place document that you can plan around. Here is the risk that you need to prepare. It's a reasonable risk to, to mitigate. And make sure that they have a plan in place, map that out, and then go further. It's not that hard. But you need to do it yourselves. You can't let it to somebody else, because if somebody else comes and drops a brochure off, it doesn't mean anybody knows anything about it. And a final note. I would really appreciate when I go to planning meetings, especially around this zoning and this chemical thing, that city officials in planning actually speak truthfully and not knowingly give false statement. And that has happened in front of your solicitor at these 
Development Appeals Board and the Saskatchewan Municipal Board, which I take offense to. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I uh, do have a question, and I, I if, if leveling an accusation like that, I would ask that you provide some, I'm not asking you to do it right now, but to, to make sure you're providing information I'm about what it is that you're prepared to, your speaking to yeah. as a follow-up. Councillor Dunauer has uh, a question first. For Pardon me? Point of clarification on the speaker's uh, comments. Point, Point of, of clarification. clarification. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tarasov, for being here today. In your comments, you suggested that the diagram that we considered at planning and development was not accurate. Did I hear you say that? That's right. Okay. If um, And you're suggesting that it's, how much is it off? Is it something that we should be Half reviewing? a kilometer. Half a kilometer, okay. Yeah, well, plus or minus. Basically, the way they drew the line horizontal to the circle, they're saying no public that uh, no public assembly from that line down, except the problem is the other circle goes all the way through it, and that is the, the overriding safety, which I've mapped out there to show you. Okay. But also beyond that, the zoning, which is underneath that, all of it precludes public assembly and retail. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'll ask the administration after we've gone through the questions uh, to you to address that, and then uh, we'll see where we take it from there. And following up on His Worship's comments, as Chair of Planning, Development, Community Services, you can certainly write to me with your concerns about information that was presented, and I will follow up on it for you. Uh, uh, your Worship, I tried to write to the Executive and Development Committee, and it was not pushed through from the clerk's office at that time. Okay. Well, we see you have a package of information that is being circulated now, yeah. so that will be part of the official record. Um, and, uh, and as I said, I mean, I think the key is we understand exactly what can, consideration what it is that you're speaking of so we can consider it in, um, in a thoughtful way because uh, those are quite strong uh, accusations that you level and I don't see any other lights on at this time Mr. Tarasov. Thank uh, you very much have a good day. Councillor Hill. Uh, thank you Worship and to the administration I'm not sure who would uh, answer this we heard that Mr. Tarasov has concerns that our diagram may not be accurate can somebody speak to that, or would you prefer that we just refer this back to you to review that? Uh, Your Worship, if, I think it would be best if we take this back and look at it. Um, I'm not quite clear on what Mr. Tarasov is suggesting from the line work based on the package he submitted, so we'd need to do some more work. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. I'll change my motion then that we just refer this back to the administration to confirm with Mr. Tarasov the diagrams that were presented to PTC and uh, that we are talking about the same areas. <laughs> Okay. So, Councillor Hill, you are withdrawing your I am original right. motion, and you are replacing that. Yeah, I just referring it back for clarification. So, whether refer. they want to bring it back to GPC or to Council I, I, for ratification on the final decision, but if we did not have accurate diagrams for consideration during debate, we need to know that. Okay. Is there a seconder for Councillor Hill's motion? Seconded by Councillor Block. It is difficult to consider the comments and information given that there's one, one document circulated that we're not uh, able to review as Council. So uh, I don't see any other lights on for comments or questions. All those in favor? Oh, Councillor Jeffries. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just wanted to ask, just quickly, of administration, as I know that we had the report here as it related to how some of the outreach happens and, and, and everything else um, for shelter in place and uh, that type of information. Can administration speak to the way in which um, potential builders or landowners are notified of the zone in which they're building? So I guess it kind of would be thinking more on the Saskatoon land side of things. Uh, if someone is looking to, to build or is building, uh, what kind of information they're provided with about the fact that they are in a certain zone and that uh, perhaps they've got considerations that need to be accounted for as they're going through uh, their planning to, to build or, or locate in the area. Uh, Your Worship, this area is covered by the IL-2 zoning district and in that zoning district there are different limitations. So when someone comes in and inquires, we do provide an outline of what needs to be considered in this area. And then with their building permit application, they're also described uh, what conditions they need to meet. 
um, it, Mr. Frank Long may be able to speak to what Saskatoon Land communicates uh, during the sale. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm asking, but more or less, is it fairly explicit during those processes through you, Your Worship, that um, that the expectation or, or thought is that shelter-in-place plans should be uh, identified and, and, and basically brought together with these individual businesses that are locating there. Um, uh, having never uh, opened a business in the North End or purchased land from Saskatoon land in that area, I don't know what the process looks like, but um, you know, I, I'm trying to understand how direct or explicit that uh, information is provided. Uh, Your Worship, Frank Long, Director of Saskatoon, Saskatoon Land. <clears throat> so when we when we sell land uh, to landlords, we make the make it very clear what the zoning is that's in place for the particular parcel. Um, we also go to the uh, more extent in, in identifying that public uh, public assembly uses are not permitted in this area. Uh, we don't provide information about the shelter in place. Uh, we let the, the zoning and land use rules kind of inform that. Um, it's definitely something we could probably do because uh, we do have some more land we're going to put to market in this area So it's an extra step. I think we could start bringing forward in the future when we are marketing those lands Okay, uh, thank you uh, through you, your worship for that information uh, So just uh, briefly through you uh, to Ms. Anderson uh, as you ask or mentioned the, uh, the building permit process and, and the information about zoning how explicit is that within those processes? Obviously, it's there in the zoning, but I think with many things uh, that we have in our zoning bylaws, perhaps sometimes people, if they dig and look themselves, they'll find it, but do we specifically and explicitly tell them, you are building in this type of area, and these would be some of the expectations that we would have, whereby someone would receive that information prior to building or around the time of building, instead of just receiving it as we're doing a public education campaign. Uh, your worship to the councillor so through the fire inspection process owners are educated explicitly about the shelter in place requirements uh, so that does come in during the process that they are notified of that requirement okay and i don't think we have anyone from fire here today yes miss pamela golden oh. uh, mcleod is here oh okay Director my, of my apologies um yes i'm, I'm wondering if uh if through you, your worship uh someone from fire could uh perhaps just in brief detail say what that looks like and of course I, if the motion were to pass I would imagine that uh, uh, we would get something back as well at the council level to say hey this was accurate this was not accurate and anything else we can follow up on at that time. Um, Pamela Gold McLeod director of emergency planning through chair to you Councillor Jeffries um, I I'm the director of emergency management, so while I do work for fire, I don't want anybody to think I'm an expert on fire prevention and the work they do. Um, but they do go out regularly to businesses and track and share information about what the businesses need to do to remain safe in their areas. Okay. Um, and through your worship, do you know, uh, Ms. Golden McLeod, if the, during that building permit process, what that looks like for notification or whether it's kind of dropping off a flyer or if there's conversation that happens or... Perhaps that's a question to follow up directly with uh, um, you know, some of the folks. Yeah, through your worship to um, Councillor Jeffries, I I can't speak um, fully on that topic, so I prefer okay. we come back with that. Okay, thank you, your worship. Okay, thank you, Councillor Jeffries. So we do have a recommendation. I asked pointed questions of Mayor Clark at the NSBA luncheon in the public panel forum to try to get him motivated to do something about the chemical buffer. I then received a letter from the head solicitor stating that everything was completed as far as the city was concerned and they would not be discussing any of it with me further and then giving me a veiled threat if I continue to talk about it. During the mayor debate, which I was a part of at Teacup for the Chamber of Commerce, I used my two minute opening statement to specifically talk about the chemical buffer. And no media outlet, even though they were taping it live for TV or in radio, uh, no candidate, nobody spoke a word about the chemical buffer after that. 
at the Miwasan Valley Authority board presentation that I gave, I brought up the fact that right now the Miwasan Trail exits underneath the Chief Miswasan's Bridge where it meets up with the Wanuskewin Trail. And inside of this is the chemical buffer, but also for this new university sector plan, it specifically says an important plan future connection will extend the trail from Circle Drive Bridge to the Chief Mistawasis Bridge. So planning is already underway and yet they haven't properly dealt with safety yet. So I needed to bring it up with Mewasan Valley and USASC. So I did give a presentation about the USAS development to the Municipal Planning Commission because the, the north edge of the USAS development is now encroaching into the proposed development that the city put in for the university sector plan, which wasn't properly addressing the chemical buffer. And also Miwasan Valley has already indicated that they're, they're already designing the trails to go through to the bridge, which is inside the chemical buffer. So it's very relevant that USASC start actually looking at the planning. So the question then went from me to the head of planning for the city of Saskatoon. Then the EMO office at the city started tweeting out a bunch about emergency preparedness and having everybody ready for shelter in place. So a general shelter in place for the whole city, while they won't deal with the dedicated issue of shelter in place for a dedicated planning issue that's marked on all their maps within the city, which is within the existing chemical buffer. So I started pushing back against that because at least if you're going to talk about shelter in place, you should start being very specific about the ones that you already should have dealt with years ago. It's interesting that when the city of Saskatoon blocked me, they said, Kerry Tarasov continues to make serious safety allegations against the city of Saskatoon regarding the chemical buffer zone in the city. His facts are wrong and inaccurate. This issue has been considered by council and dealt with extensively by the administration. Is it dealt with? Is the safety been dealt with? Have they followed through on the things they've said they've already been doing? They claim they're doing things, but are they actually doing them? Yes or no? In June of 2021, I put in an access to information request from the city of Saskatoon to find out who authorized that I'd be blocked on Twitter, to who created the statement that I was being wrong and inaccurate and released that to the public. And also the third thing was, what was I wrong and inaccurate about since it's never been stated and won't be clarified even for the press. Interesting that the one thing not redacted, which was supposed to be a solicitor comment is, the city takes the safety of their residents seriously, lead back into what we should be talking about. Well, they're not talking about safety, are they? They're not talking to the people in the area or making that effort. So what is it they're really trying to talk about other than deflect away from this issue? The city of Saskatoon does not like when I mention directly people's managers' names and positions and bring up exact quotes of them either by video or verbatim. They, they don't like to be that accountable. They, they say that's wrong. When they blocked me on Twitter, they said that, that that broke their code of conduct. But interesting enough here, it says, this is from their own people, say, have our general code of conduct type expectations listed right in our Facebook page, but due to the character limits on our Twitter bio, we don't have those list of rules. However, some cities link to their website with a code of conduct, social media. So obviously the city of Saskatoon doesn't even have these rules for Twitter posted that they use to block me for any circumstance because they don't want to be accountable. I don't think that's right. I think if someone makes a public statement about safety, and then they hide for the fact that they've done this. I think that that's reprehensible. I was excited to see in an upcoming agenda for the city of Saskatoon that the land branch was proposing to sell land in the chemical buffer. I was extremely happy to read that they were gonna provide provisions for safety in the sale of the land right off the start, which is all that I've asked for. So you will note that uh, of the three people who were part of this, that the manager of the land branch, Mr. Frank Long, who I have specifically mentioned in the past and who has made comments at city council about this issue, has taken it upon himself to, to do something to fix this issue. And it was highly commendable that they were going in this direction, but as you will see, it didn't last very long. With the exception of land uses and activities associated with public assembly, as they fall within the chemical buffer zone in Marcus Industrial Area. And if you go to the end, 
It says potential purchasers will be notified of the shelter in place requirements within sales information packages. The sale agreements for parcels will also contain clauses acknowledging the purchaser is aware of necessary information regarding emergency plans or shelter in place requirements. That is awesome. After they had this motion posted to the website and the documents, I was very sad to see later all of a sudden that the agenda had it withdrawn and it wouldn't be presented to council. It should be, this is a good direction I believe personally, and I was hopeful that maybe finally something was going to be happening. But now that it's been withdrawn, I don't know that they're not going back to their existing plan of doing nothing. The original chemical buffer set up by the city of Saskatoon wasn't properly drawn for a couple of reasons. First, they used only a dot as a point. This is more like an intensive livestock operation. So you want to be away from the farthest edge of that feedlot, not the center of the barn because that could mean you're a lot closer to the hazard, right? So this site has storage areas with lots of chemicals. The plant itself has multiple areas that are probably hazards. So with the plant's intervention, the city should have drawn a buffer, a physical land buffer around this area and taken that and offset it by the buffer required for safety so that you're actually offset from the actual hazard, not some arbitrary point in the middle, which actually means nothing. And that just makes things even worse, as you will see in the second slide. So while the city doesn't adhere to the first buffer at all because of their bridge, the, the Mwasan Trail, public events that they've held, they just blatantly ignore it. Now this actual second buffer is of significance. So I've drawn this second buffer roughly based on the offsets that I realize should be applied after watching that Jackrabbit 2 project series of videos from YouTube. And I noticed that it went through all the new perimeter highways. So I actually talked to the project engineer in charge of that project, and I'd met with him before over the design of it. And on the original buffer, you'll see that it's just skirting it. But now if you really take the actual hazards into account, it's well through the highway. So I talked to this gentleman, and I was very happy to hear his attitude and also the manner in which he would deal with this. And he said the highway wouldn't redirect. There's, there's fairly fast moving traffic coming. And so if there's an alarm goes off, they'll be linked in. And if they require it, he said, we'll just put up billboards on either side of the hazard down the highway and stop traffic there. And that way they won't enter the area. So they'll have a big billboard to say, stop hazard ahead, you know, like an avalanche zone, do not enter avalanche ahead, that kind of an issue. So it was very simple for him. And I said, well, you're linking with the city and the city of Saskatoon won't even do this for the Marcos Drive Bridge. And they go right through it. And he said, it doesn't matter. We're the province, we're independent, and we will do what we de deem to be necessary when it requires it. So that is all I could request. I, the highway will still go through the hazard, which the rail lines go through our city. It keeps going. But that they have a plan in place, a reasonable plan that they could employ if they need to by that time. That was significant to me, and it's very good news. So if this new buffer is actually accurate, uh, or even if the old buffer is taken as fact, just the pinpoint one, this, the Department of Highways seems very poised to make good decisions to try to keep people safe. And that's very nice to hear. For almost five years, I've been dealing with this chemical buffer issue with the city of Saskatoon, but I can't figure out what to do to motivate the right people to get the right things done so that we can all put this to bed.